So in this video, we kind of wanted to go into the whys of the build and uh, how we ended up on an E350, our previous vehicles, and kind of the plan. So we initially wanted to convert a high roof transit van quite a while ago, and it just financially at the time wasn't an option. So we ended up getting a SUV and kind of building it out overland style for travel. So we absolutely love the capability and the footprint of the Xterra, and for shorter trips, it works great. But what we've been running into is the livability on longer trips is really not great. So after, you know, one to two months, we kind of, it's just very crammed. There's no interior space. And that's why we're looking for a new vehicle. The great thing about the Xterra though, is it definitely crushed the dream of the high roof transit after having a vehicle that is that capable and kind of able to go anywhere. Um, we definitely now know that the being able to off-road is really important to us and we need a vehicle that is a lot more capable than a full-size unibody van can deliver. So with that said, I kind of want to go into our uh, vehicle considerations and what is important to us in a vehicle. So the first thing is uh, interior sleeping. We want the ability to sleep inside and then a big part of that is also to be able to stealth sleep. And as far as what stealth means to us, it's not like having a undercover van where no one can notice you're in there, but more you know, not having to set up a tent or raise the roof if it's popped off in order to sleep when you need to. Another big thing is a configuration that allows me to stand up completely. Uh, that was a big thing is the transit van is the only van where I can actually stand up fully by the time you add a floor in. And uh, with that said, I actually, I mean, I don't like the idea of having a roof right above your head. So having a little bit of space uh, would be ideal. The indoor space also needs to be comfortable for all weather situations. And that means rain, snow, and kind of in the temperature region of negative 30 to 80 Fahrenheit. We definitely love to do winter camping um, and some extreme cold camping. Uh, we definitely do not like hot weather. So, I mean, if it's more than 80, we probably don't want to be in the area anyways, but definitely want to be comfortable for that temperature range. Another big thing is we want to have room for two to work on laptops comfortably. So ideally not in bed, but an actual work surface where you can comfortably have a laptop on a table, use a mouse or even a computer screen if needed, just to comfortably work and support remote jobs. Another big thing is the ability to carry significant resources for off-road travel. So, I mean, one of the big things with the Xterra is even if we were okay with the comfort, the amount of space we had wasn't great. So. Things like food, water, and gas that you need for extended off-road travel. We were kind of at the limitations of the space and the payload we had. So we definitely want a vehicle that can, you know, not just give a good interior space, but have room to carry all the stuff we need to live off-grid for extended periods of time. Uh, the next big thing is we want it to be as fuel efficient as possible. Um, can't say that one with a straight face. Uh, off-road capable. So this is a big one and I think a lot of people miss what this means and it kind of means something different to us. Uh, the most important part first off with a vehicle like this is just the overall size. Um, from what we've seen with the Xterra, that's kind of the biggest limitation. It's already a really small SUV, but one of the biggest limitations for where we travel is the size. So, you know, something like a Unimog or a bigger expedition vehicle, they may be great like off-road traveling you know over barren land but anywhere we've been um, the biggest problem is like can you fit the vehicle and even if you're in the desert the road shelf roads are really tight if you're in anywhere with trees um, the trees overhang are really tight so definitely the most important part for off-road is making it as small as possible so with that said we didn't want the overall length to be any more than uh, a mid-size truck to maybe a you know really small full size as for the width, we do have to kind of compromise a little bit there, but don't want it to be any wider than a full-size truck. So the height also needs to be to an absolute minimum, which essentially makes a pop-top a must. I also really like the idea of a pop-top because, uh, you know, with a sprinter van, you only end up with, after your floor, like six feet two of standing height. And with a transit van, I think you can get away with like six and a half feet at absolute most. So even though those would be standing height, it would, you know, the roof would be right over your head uh, for me, which I really don't like. And I like the idea of a pop top because um, with our current design, our ceiling height will be about eight and a half feet. 
which means we'll have ample headspace. It won't feel cramped at all and give a lot of room when we're apart. The weight also needs to be to an absolute minimum. Um, when it comes to off-road capable, I mean, having your weight be as low as possible is great. It is obviously gonna be a heavier vehicle compared to what we're used to, but um, the chassis should definitely be able to handle that. And with that said, the center of gravity also needs to be very low. So the build, we want to be very intentional, keep all of water, fuel, everything really, really low. As for the uh, suspension and actual like off-road parts, um, as much suspension travel as possible, clearance to fit big tires, and a very robust four-wheel drive system that is reliable, easy to maintain and work on, and we can source parts anywhere in the world. So with that said, we considered a lot of different vehicles and in the end kind of landed on a few different options, which was a Jeep Gladiator, a full-size truck camper, and an E350 van. I like the idea of a Jeep Gladiator uh, because I want to do something similar to the Road Shows Me and Wabi Sabi. Um, I'll go ahead and overlay some photos of their build, but essentially they built a composite camper on a Jeep Wrangler. I think it'd be cool to do that in Jeep Gladiator. Uh, I could make an entire video just kind of about the vehicle considerations. So if you're interested in that, we can go into that more. But the reason why we didn't choose the Gladiator is uh, one payload. While it would have enough payload for a habitat and potentially a very light interior, there wouldn't be enough payload to carry all the stuff we want. And then uh, with the length of that vehicle, there's a lot of considerations with um, isolating the habitat from the vehicle chassis and uh, kind of getting rid of some of the factory components in the rear. So we uh, ruled against that. Um, Full-size truck camper, I think that's kind of the easiest route to go and would have been a great option. If we were not wanting to build one ourselves. I think that would be the perfect route. There's some awesome options from like OEV. Uh, the downside with the truck camper compared to the van is it ends up being a lot longer of a vehicle for the same size habitat and it ends up being taller, kind of wider, and just all the dimensions end up bigger. Um, the big benefit, I mean, super easy to get. You can get them with four wheel drive already and they make great bases for overland travel. We checked out an E350 van in person, just a normal, um, you know, regular body van, and we really liked it. And that was kind of the plan for the longest time until we realized with our layout plan, we couldn't, uh, or at least I couldn't sit up fully underneath the bed. I could if it was like kind of more of like a laid back couch um, kind of bed configuration sit up, but with the way we wanted to do it with a bed up top and um, you know being able to sit up upright to work on a laptop, there just wasn't enough room. So we were kind of bummed about that and um, we looked into the cutaway vans and the problem with the cutaway was availability. Um, at the time, I think there was like this was about six months ago, there was a three year wait or maybe a two year wait on getting a new van, which just made it not an option. Um, we did consider a used cutaway. The problem is um, most of those, by the time the person is selling it, it's no longer you know, financially a good vehicle to be purchasing. Um, for example, you know, a U-Haul vehicle, by the time they're ready to sell it, it basically means it's no longer financially worth it for them to maintain the vehicle. So we definitely weren't interested in investing a lot of money into um, a vehicle body that wouldn't have much life in it. So at the end of the day, we ended up with a cutaway van and we kind of had a surprise opportunity to get it. Talking to Justin at Ujoin Off-Road in Colorado about the vans and he actually mentioned that he had saw one sitting on a dealership lot in Florida a while back and was obviously very interested. So I was like, hey, can you send us the link for that? And he did and it was still available. And um, shout out Justin, thank you so much for finding the van, but we ended up going for it. It was in Florida. We got it shipped to San Diego where we're currently located in, which was a pain in the ass, but got it all figured out. It got to us in mostly great condition. And now we have an E350 cutaway camper to build, um, which we've already started building. So we're filming this much later. So, with that said, um, here are some cool specs of the E350 camper build. This is kind of more what is planned for the habitat size and just kind of how the vehicle will work. So, so the overall width is 79.4 inches at the body and we're gonna build the habitat structure with square walls, um, which is a big benefit of building it ourselves and going with the cutaway. So 
essentially, you know, where the normal van curves in, we can go straight up and end up with way more living space without being that much wider on the outside, or I guess not wider at all, just a little bit more space taken up in the corner. Um, the overall length with a 10 and a half foot long habitat is 212 inches. Um, fun fact, that is six inches shorter than a Jeep Gladiator, uh, which I think is pretty crazy because the Jeep Gladiator can seat four people, but only has a five foot bed. So being able to fit, fit a 10 and a half foot habitat and be shorter by half a foot is pretty sweet. And um, I mean, it's shorter than a lot of uh, current midsize uh, pickups. So really happy with that. Um, the wheelbase is 137 inches, which is the exact same as the Jeep Gladiator. Uh, by the time it has the 4x4 conversion, it will have a really good approach angle, reasonable breakover angle, and really good departure angle. And uh, I ran the numbers, just rough estimate, and compared to our Overland SUV, the Xterra on 33s, which I want to say about a 3-inch lift, um, the approach and departure will be better, and the breakover, I think, will be about the same. So really happy with that. So uh, with the E350 van, you, uh, one of the big downsides is you have to convert it to four-wheel drive. It's only two-wheel drive from the factory. As for which company, we're going with uh, U-Joint Off-Road um, out of Colorado, doing their Colorado shop with Justin. And uh, we considered a few different conversions. At the end of the day, it was really between Agile and U-Joint. And um, being honest, we didn't even really consider Agile that seriously. So it was really just U-Joint that we wanted. And there's quite a few reasons why we went with U-Joint. I think the biggest thing is it's just a really robust system. Um, everything that you know is likely to break uh, and needs to be serviced is very easily serviceable and easy to get parts for. I think it's one of the things that a lot of people miss uh, when worrying about reliability and serviceability and custom parts is it really matters what is likely to break. So for example, with the U-Joint kit, you end up with uh, custom leaf spring hangers and uh, custom shock mounts and stuff, but all of that stuff is really well built. And unless you're doing something extreme, like jumping it, you know, things like that are not what break. The things that are likely to need servicing is your wheel bearings um, and just, you know, general, your axles, parts like that. So as long as all of those parts are easily obtained and fixable, which they are, it's just a Dana 60, you can get parts for that anywhere. Um, we were really happy with it. So, the other thing too that's great about their kit is you have room for 37s, which is awesome. Um, kind of deciding between 37s and 35s, I think we're gonna go with 37s just because I want big fucking tires. Um, <laughs> like 35s would be the smarter choice and we are doing a lot of freeway, so um, it probably makes more sense, but is what it is. So we can always go down in tire size if we want. It's what it is because I made it that way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A cool thing too about the E350 is it has a 5,000 pound payload capacity or I think a little bit over that. So that's one of the big things we ran into the Xterra. Um, I'd say like 90% of Overland SUVs you, say, you see that are like somewhat kitted out are way overweight. Um, we're at payload by the time you add like absolutely no gear and people um, and you just have, you know, sliders, front bumper, rear bumper, roof rack, skids, tent, um, drawer system, all of that we're already at payload. And we haven't had any problems, but it's kind of one of those things where if you can avoid being over your payload, it's great. And with 5,000 pounds, we will be um, greatly under. And it's also been, you know, kind of weird because with building the box ourselves, we kind of have weight decisions along along the way. It's not just about what we're putting inside or attaching on, but the actual structure itself and making that as light as possible. And the last thing, uh, it comes from the factory with uh, 325 horsepower and 450 feet pound of torque. It's the Ford 7.3 Godzilla engine. And it's actually significantly detuned from the factory. Um, with just a simple ECU flash, you can get, I think, like 425 horsepower out of it. Um, and that's no custom parts, just getting the ECU flashed. And that's actually how much power it ships um, in the Ford Tremor model that they ship the same engine. So while it is a gas hog, you know, it's going to handle the weight, no problem. It's going to do great off-road, really powerful engine. It's not going to feel like a slow vehicle. So now moving on to uh, the actual plans of the vehicle, how we're going to build it. Um, 
we're, I mean, it's obviously a cutaway van, so we're gonna build a composite camper rear habitat. It's essentially going to be uh, an aluminum subframe with an aluminum uh, exoskeleton, and then a composite fiberglass foam core panels adhered to that, um, which some of that may already have been done. Um, we're gonna go with a uh, vertical pop top. So essentially the roof is gonna pop straight up. Uh, we have that with our current rooftop tent. We absolutely love it. Having that with an actual um, you know, vehicle you can be inside is gonna be great. So we definitely want to do that to maximize the room um, and then get the most uh, standing height. And then on the top of that, there's basically like, I guess, inside, um, kind of similar to like the Westphalia van, there's gonna be a bed platform. And the idea is that you can be um, seated fully, the van is still usable on, underneath the bed platform, um, but the bed platform can fully be moved out of the way. So when we're not sleeping, we have the entire area open. Um, and it gives you a ton of space with, I think about eight and a half foot ceilings. So a major benefit of having the completely vertical walls is it gives us a lot more width at, higher up in the van. So um, the bed up top will be, uh, it won't be lengthwise, unfortunately, but it'll be um, front to back and the width will be just a little bit less than a king bed. So it'll be nice and spacious up there. Um, the overall length of the box is a little bit over 10 feet um, wall to wall inside. And then the overall vehicle length, which I already went over, is 212 inches. So as for the interior, I'll kind of overlay just roughly what the interior plans are going to look like. Um, We'll eventually make a dedicated video to this and uh, as we get further along. Um, a cool thing is we actually already made a life-size model um, before we bought the van in the backyard. So when we were considering the different options, um, I was tired of looking at 3D models and uh, wanted to have an actual physical space. So basically set out to make a van box as cheap as possible and um, out of wood. So we did that in the backyard perfectly to scale and we were absolutely amazed with how much space we had and um, I think at least for me that was kind of one of the major turning points um, that made it feel way more real and made me really excited for uh, the vehicle build was just getting to be inside the space and see how much room we'd have. So yeah we're gonna have an upper bed, um, a really large counter space, planning for about 900 amp hours of uh, lithium battery, um, water storage somewhere about 50 to 80 gallons um, of fresh water stored inside. There's going to be uh, a lower convertible dinette bed situation so we can work there and um, either sleep extra people if we need to or if we need to stealth camp um, sleep down there. Um, and then we'll have a hidden shower that will essentially raise out of the floor pan. So like I said we'll go into that more later and have a dedicated video for that. Um, when we're actually working on that. Uh, as for the exterior, I kind of went into this briefly already, but it's going to be an aluminum spring mounted um, subframe with uh, an aluminum exoskeleton and then fiberglass walls. And uh, the next video will kind of be going into the subframe. We've already filmed that and just kind of deep diving into how we built that. So if you're interested, we'll hopefully get that posted soon and um, show more details on that. So yeah, that about wraps it up. Um, if there's any areas of particular interest, we're happy to make any videos talking about a specific thing. Um, I mean, there's kind of a lot that's involved in building your own camper and there's a lot we're not going over. So if there's anything particular you're interested in, happy to make a video on that. Um, one of the things I was thinking about is maybe the vehicle considerations because I mean, we spent probably a year deciding what vehicles. So happy to make a vehicle or, you know, video dedicated to that. Um, and yeah, so the next video will be about the subframe. If you're interested uh, in the build, please subscribe. We'll kind of be getting uh, more technical into the build and uh, filming as we go along. So yeah, thanks so much for watching.